Hi, this is Jonathan Cook. And this is Blake Bainham. And what are we looking at today? We're looking at our first piece, which is a bar at the Follet Berger. It is a work by Edouard Manet, and it was completed in 1882. Uh, this work exemplifies a lot of realism. Um, it's the, one of the last works by Manet, and it represents realism by utilizing a lot of light and focusing on trying to portray the most realistic elements that we can through. So this is different from Impressionism then, right? Right. This is moving away from Impressionism. It's a reaction. They're trying to move more towards realism, trying to bring back boundaries, looking at form and structure within the painting. So John, what is exactly the Follet Berger? All right. So the Follet Berger was a Parisian nightclub it was essentially for the upper middle class within Paris. It was a classy place where you could go and take a date or go and watch the local entertainment that they had over a drink. So why does the bartender look so sad? What's going on here? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. She may look sad because she is a prostitute. According to art historian Larry Ligo, Manet often associated prostitution with oranges in his paintings. And if you look to the right of the painting, there is a bowl of oranges. So what's going on in the background of this painting? Good question. There is a mirror behind her in this painting. So not only are we looking at her from our perspective, but we're also able to see the rest of the Folie Berger. If you look in the back, there is this wide opening where they have all of these tables. You see the chandelier. What's great about this is that he is using the idea of a mirror to change our ideas of perspective. We're able to look at Susan, but we are also able to see the room from her perspective as well. Ah, oh, I see. Très intéressant. Okay then, let's travel a couple years later and look at another painting here by a Frenchman, Georges Seurat. And this painting is called A Sunday Afternoon on the Isle of Le Grand Jacques. And it was completed in the year 1886. Serra took two years painting this masterpiece, during which time he made over 60 studies or pre-paintings in preparation for the final work. That's interesting. So why is the color so vivid in this painting? Well, that's because of an interesting technique used by Serra. You see, all the colors in this painting are actually composed of miniature dots of contrasting colors, often just primary colors like red, blue, and yellow, um, blended together to form all the different hues and shades seen in the picture. In this picture, you can see an example of what the tiny dots look like up close. As you can see, only red, yellow, and blue dots are used, but when viewed from farther back, the eye is tricked into seeing the secondary colors of orange, green, and purple. See that black border around the picture that looks like part of the frame? Yeah. Well, that's interesting because it's actually painted in, in close-up of the bottom left-hand corner. You can see that that black border is actually just blue and red dots. So Ra believed this technique would make the colors appear more brilliant than brush strokes. So how many dots do you think it took to make the entire painting? Well, that's a good question. Because each dot is about one millimeter in diameter, and the whole piece, which is 10 feet wide by 7 feet high, makes up about 6.4 million square millimeters. That would be 6.4 million dots. Wow, that's impressive. I can see why it took him two years to paint this. So tell me something about the scenery. Is this an actual location? This is an actual location, indeed. This is the Isle of Le Grand Jatte, as the title suggests. This was an island on the Seine River, right on the outskirts of Paris. It was a very popular location for recreation among Parisians. And I think we have a picture of it somewhere. Let, let's see. Yes, it looks like it hasn't changed much since Seurat's time. What I like most about this picture is the peaceful aura among all the subjects. I look at this and I just think I want to go sit by the river for a bit and do nothing. It's very peaceful to look at. Don't you agree? Yeah, definitely. And both a bar at the Follet Berger and a Sunday afternoon, we're able to see how artists are trying to change the way that we think about perspective. Another similarity is the use of realism. Seurat strives to create realistic colors and lighting. 
And with Manet, he is using the mirror to reflect on our perspective, how we are able to see from multiple perspectives, placing ourselves into the sight of another and being able to see things from their eyes. Thank you.